everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Paul Gullickson. I'm with CEP Forensic, a forensic engineering firm. Today we're in our Ottawa office, actually our new Ottawa office, and specifically we're in our clean lab space. Joining me today is a, are a couple of structural engineers, Charlie Massad, Paul Seneker. Hey guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, as you might expect, with two structural engineers, we're going to be talking about structural engineering. And so let's jump right into it. Uh, and the first question will go to Paul. What is forensic structural engineering? I mean, that's a pretty broad question. So we'll just unpack that for a second and answer quickly. What is structural engineering? And really, it's the job and the role of a structural engineer to design the houses that you live in and the buildings that you work in and the roads and the bridges that you might take to get between those places. And they try and use math and science to figure out how efficiently they can build these buildings. Now, the forensic engineer gets involved when that process breaks down and there's unexpected behaviors that occur usually it's a failure. Okay, why don't we unpack that a little bit more? What kind of failure, or why does a structural fail, and what kind of investigations are you guys seeing? I mean, there's a ver wide variety of reasons why a structure might fail, but fundamentally it's because the load that's been imposed on that structure exceeds its capacity. And so, you know, that can happen again for a variety of reasons. It could be an unexpected use. Um, you could be a climactic event, like a snow load or a wind load, and we've been getting a lot of those in the regions recently. Um, it could be something like a life, life cycle on the materials. So the materials that we use all have an end of life to them, usually, and these things can fatigue over time. But I think the one that we don't quite acknowledge as often is that building buildings is actually a really complicated exercise. And so we can have failures all along those different phases, whether that's in the design portion, the construction phase, or the handoff and maintenance phase. All of those places are sources of failure. We've got to keep our eyes open for all of them. Yeah, a lot of factors to consider. Uh, Charlie, why don't you walk us through kind of the invest investigative process? Sure. So the first step would be to receive the mandate and check what, what available information we have. So after reviewing the information, we can then have a better idea of what the situation would be. Does it seem dangerous? Would we require temporary shoring? What are the tools required? So we'll be better equipped to do the inspection. After that, we can do the inspection where we document everything. We document the, the extent of damage on the structure, and we take a lot of measurements, which will be used in the analysis. Okay. Well, uh, I think one of the failures that I find the most interesting that you guys handle are, um, you know, major collapses related to, uh, I guess you mentioned a climactic event, so snow loading or when there's a lot of snow and, and we have a collapse. Can you kind of walk us through that analysis? That's a very good topic because in often cases, snow loading failures involve a lot of forensic engineering. Okay. So the first step would be is to estimate or to have a general idea about what the actual load was when the structure failed. That can be done through during the inspection or through uh, reviewing uh, weather available data. So after that, we check the code that was applicable at the time of construction of mm -hmm. the, let's say, for example, it's a roof structure. So we check what it should have been designed to resist then we can compare the two values and, and make a judgment to, to know if the actual load exceeded what it was prescribed to be designed for. After that, during the inspection, we can also highlight uh, weak, uh, weak spots in the structure, and we can also uh, notice if there's any faulty worksmanship, and this way we can determine the cause of the failure. Interesting, okay. Now, I'm thinking a lot of our viewers here today may have a claim in front of them that could include a structurally damaged building. So after you've determined what happened, what's next? Do we knock it down and start over? No, no, no. That's not, that's not how it's supposed to be handled. And to give you a brief explanation about it, we as forensic engineers, we deal with a lot of uh, damaged structures. Of course. So what we try to always do is, during the analysis, we really try to see if it can be repairable. Because if it's repairable if, and if it's more efficient and feasible to repair it, why knock it down? We can just repair it. And in some, in some other cases, when we can make a judgment that, okay, the, that the extent of the damage, it's too, it's too broad and it can't be repaired, then we can recommend the complete replacement. So when you start to move into the design phase, that's kind of going back to your structural engineering roots and combining forensic and design. Now you're working with our drafts team, I presume you work with the contractors. Maybe walk us through that. Yeah, so in the design phase, what we do is, and this is basically the step after the analysis. So we work on the design of the drawings. We recommend the repairs. Uh, and these drawings will, will allow the contractor to obtain construction permits. After that, we can work closely with the contractor in order to, to ensure that the project goes on smoothly 
and all the repairs are done according to these standards. Okay, great. Can we go back to Paul? Uh, can you take us kind of through a specific example related to this? Yeah, I mean, one of the most common examples that we encounter um, is when we collaborate with our fire team on buildings that have been damaged by a significant fire. And so either we come in before the inspe their inspections and start to anal analyze the building to see if it is safe for an investigation, or we might come in after the investigation and start to determine what is the extent of damage, um, you know, what exactly has to be replaced, what exactly has to be rebuilt. Uh, and then we usually fall into a repair phase of our building, like Charlie had mentioned. We'll start to make plans for what that repair looks like and submit them for the authority having jurisdiction. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's a um, great example as C CP Forensic is a multidisciplinary forensic engineering firm. And I think the collaboration between the fire team and the civil team is a really great example of that. Among We have many others. Um, I think that's all the time we have today, so I appreciate you joining us today, and thank you guys for walking us through kind of the structural engineering world. Um, join us on our next video, um, but if you have any questions related to this one, don't hesitate to reach out. You can get a hold of us through our website at cep-experts.ca. Have a good day.